Hi guys. Today I'm going to show you how to cook Italian. Specifically, we're going to make what are called gnocchis, which are tiny little Italian dumplings. Now traditionally, for those of you who are Italian, they make them out of these, potatoes. But that requires you to boil potatoes, peel potatoes, and rice potatoes. So guess what? We don't give a spud about that. I'm going to show you an easier way, which all it requires are just three basic things. You need a tub of ricotta cheese. You need one or two eggs. The reason I'm saying one or two, if you use the small ricotta, you're going to use one egg. If you're going to use the large ricotta, which I've got here, you're going to use two. And you're going to need some flour. You're also going to need a big bowl so we can mix up the dough. You're going to need a cutting board so we can cut it. A knife. And you're going to need a cookie sheet. Now I've put some wax paper on the cookie sheet because it'll keep the gnocchis from sticking. Because once we cut these things, we're going to freeze them on cookie sheets. Got all that? Okay, don't worry if you don't because we're going to go back over this again in one second when I bring you in close to see how we set this puppy up. So get ready to cook Italian on Man Cave Munchies. Ready to get started? First thing we're going to do is going to take our tub of ricotta. We're going to dump it into the big bowl. Make sure you use a spoon to get as much of the ricotta out of the container as you can. A little bit will always cling to the bottom. All right. Into that we're going to fill our ricotta container with flour. And the beauty of this is like I said it's almost as much of a formula as it is a recipe because whether you're using the small or the large ricotta you do the same thing. You dump out the ricotta and then you fill the container to the top, I mean to the very top, which you'll see in a second, with flour. Okay. A little more. There we go. And then you dump that boom, into the bowl, same bowl. Since we've used the large ricotta, I'm going to crack two eggs into this. To use a small one, you're going to use one, but I'm figuring, hey, if I'm going to go through all this, I'm going to use up as much as I can. And then we're going to take our big spoon here. We're just going to start mixing the ingredients together. Make sure you break the eggs. And just start stirring. The trick is to mix the cheese and the flour and the eggs together. Now eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to have to actually get in here with your hands. But I'm not quite there yet. In fact, let me bring this over a little bit so you can see it even better. There we go. Alrighty. So eventually you'll put your hand into the flour a little bit because you don't want to get cheese all over the place. What I normally do is just coat my hands with flour and then Get in there mixing. It's like making mud pies, guys. Neatness does not count. What you're going to want to do is end up with a big dough ball, at which point we will shift our attention to the cutting board. So I'll show you what to do with these once you get the big dough ball. And again, as things go along, you may need to add just a wee bit more flour. You'll get the hang of it. This is one of those tactile exercises. You just as much feel as anything else. And it's just like doing uh, your normal bread dough. After a while, you kind of get it used to what, what, what is dough and, and what is too loose. We're getting there. As you can see, it's starting to come together. So now the trick is to Keep turning because there's always some flour on the bottom of the bowl. Almost got it. Just about got it. I'm just going to flip it a couple more times because my objective is to get as much of the flour off the bottom of the bowl as possible and to make this dough ball as pliable as possible. I'm going to need just a little more flour. I'm almost there. Again, you'll get the feel of it. If it's all sticking to your fingers like it's doing here, you know, you're getting franken fingers, it probably needs a little more flour. But we're 
almost to the end of our first step. There we go. Voila, the dough ball. Once we get the dough ball, we're gonna move, move it aside. Just put the bowl off to one side. So we've got our cutting board ready to go. Clean off the Franken fingers just a wee bit. Get the spoon out of the way. Get your cookie sheet over here, raring to go. And then what we do is we put a little bit of flour on our board, just a little. And we take out a piece of our dough ball, like about so, a handful. Roll, roll it into a ball. And then what we're gonna do with the ball is we're gonna turn it into a snake. By the time we get it done, it should go from corner to corner on the cutting board, as you can see. If it breaks, that's okay, because we're going to be cutting it anyway. I'll try to put it back together a wee bit. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Make sure you got enough flour, you don't want it sticking. All right. Then we take Mr. Knife, and we just go wham, 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 wham. I'm gonna cut these about half inch to an inch long. Not too long, not too short. You'll get kind of get the hang of it after a couple of shots. And then you just take your finger, lay them on their back, and you put a little dimple in each one. And you'll know when you make homemade, because they're not all gonna be exactly the same size, but they're approximately, like I said, a half inch to an inch across. There you go. And then you just move them onto your wax paper. And you proceed to do this with the entire dough ball. Since you have a large, since I have a large batch of the ricotta, it'll probably fill up two of these puppies. And when they're full, what you do is you pop them in the uh, freezer for at least an hour. And then I'll show you what to do with them after all of that is accomplished. But for now, just get your cookie sheets filled up. Be right back. And please don't send me any hate mail if you prefer doing it the old-fashioned way. I mean, I was taught this version of the recipe by my aunt, Rita, who was as Italian as they come. Again, to make it man cave munchie, we try to make it as simple and bulletproof as possible. And like I said, I've never had the recipe fail using this method. There's one ready to go into the freezer. Still got some left and I've filled up both of my cookie sheets which will fill up my freezer so guess what I'm going to do. Just going to cover, put, wrap this thing up in plastic wrap, put it back into the big bowl, and when the first batch is done, we'll start working on batch number two. Another little word of warning, because I actually had this happen one time. I was going to show a friend of mine how to make gnocchis, and she said, okay, great. And I said, you got flour? She goes, yes, I do. And she gave me flour, and it turned out it was self-rising flour. Okay, we're not trying to make donuts here, guys, so just make sure you use all-purpose flour, not self-rising. Enough said. Get back to making gnocchis. If you can't fit a cookie sheet in your freezer, it's also very easy to use a plate, just make sure that they're not touching each other or they will stick together. All right, now for the moment you've all waited for, got our sauce bubbling over there, got some water boiling on the right. Here's all we gotta do. Take some of these bad boys and toss them right into the pot. Let them boil till they float to the top. Then all you got to do is fish them off, put them on your plate, and add a little bit of spaghetti sauce, and you are ready to go. It's 
as they come to the top, they're finished. It'll take all of about a minute or so in boiling water. Anytime you have fresh pasta, it takes a lot less time than it does the store-bought variety. In fact, you can see they're already starting to come to the surface. A little bit of bolognese on those bad boys. Gnocchi bolognese, just like a mama used to make, from Man Cave Munchies.